Certainly. My name is Norman D. Ingram. I'm from Rocky Point, Colorado, born in Rocky Point, Colorado, USA. From Colorado, I went to John Brown University in Silent Springs, Arkansas, which was a Christian college. And there they had uh, spiritual outreach and, and uh, some uh, missionaries came down from the Hudson Bay area. And uh, I went up there on a mission tour and uh, was planning on being a missionary. And uh, uh, at the time I took up flying and did some of that work up there. And then uh, I, on my way home I decided I had better work and be successful and send missionaries just to be one. So I got back to um, California and moved to Hawaii. And there uh, I met my uh, Lolo's mother, my son, and uh, I met, met her and we uh, were together three years. She passed on also. And uh, so when I met Stella, it was a blessing. And I had this big house in Hawaii. When you have a big house on the beach in Hawaii, you never heard for guests. So mm -hmm. you always had guests. And if you stayed around two weeks, you were a guest. And if you stayed over two weeks, you were a house mouse. <laughs> we had a young house mouse. He put this for about two months. Come into my study one day. He says, Norman, I have a book. He said, I think you might be interested. He said, no, 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 I knew, I know you're going to be interested. And he handed me this big blue stately looking book. And uh, I started opening it, opening it up about the poor parts of the book that was divided up in, especially the Jesus mm -hmm. last part of the book. And that thrilled me and uh, went into a time warp. Couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, just, just diving into the book. After about three or four days, I called Chicago and I said, what is this all about? And, and uh, Christy answered the phone from the foundation. Mm -hmm. And she says, uh, uh, and so, so she, she kind of chuckled and said, well, let me send you some literature on, on the book and uh, the brotherhood. And I said, great. I said, and send me a book because I don't want to be without it. And so that's how I found the Ranger book in 1971. And then um, in 91, I retired from, mm -hmm. from the business and sold my planes, what there was left of them. And uh, in uh, the study group in Southern California, Jerry Dalton, uh, I was asked for volunteers and a plea, put out a plea for help uh, disseminating the book. And so I volunteered. Shortly after that, so I heard of a study group in Arequipa, Peru, that had uh, several book people, but only one book. Well, you could have thrown a bucket of cold water on me, it was like this man just shook me all over. Mm -hmm. And two months later, I was heading to Peru with my books I could afford. Uh, Dwayne Fall, General Dwayne Fall, leaned over at a study group to me. He whispered in my ear, keep me posted on your trip, I may go with you. So two by two, it always tried to set up that principle. He's in the board. Uh, with the, from the Bible, it says to go by two. Mm -hmm. said, he sent them by two by two, and the Rashi book said send them by two by two. So I always had someone that uh, we were uh, with. So, so I met this young man in Peru, Perdana Fuchs. Mm -hmm. He was a Jewish boy, and Dwayne and I were sitting in our hotel in Peru, and I, this energy walk went by, and I turned and looked on the back of some people and thought, wow, well, that was strange. You went back talking to Dwayne. Pretty soon this energy came back. And I looked up and here's Bodana. And we introduced ourselves. I stood up, he was introduced us around. And uh, after the introduction, he said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, well, we're visiting the sites and uh, delivering some Milanchi books to, to a study group. 
Urantia, he says, I've been looking, he said, I'm on a spiritual quest and I've been looking for that book. So that was a great time because uh, the way, so anyhow, after a couple of days we were leaving and he was still doing poo. And, and, and he came to me and he said, I'll help you with uh, being your interpreter uh, if you help me get to Ecuador. And I said, well, Ecuador is the next on my list. So I went to Stella and I told her, I said, well, pray about it. Ask, ask the Father if this is what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> uh, then I asked the Wayne, uh, I, I said, pray about it, see what you think. He said, hell, if I was younger, I'd go with you. <laughs> he said, here's a hundred, he's like, I'm going back, I'll be back in California tomorrow. I don't need this hundred here, go put it towards the trip. So anyhow, we started out and we did uh, South America. And towards the end of South America, Africa came up, and I was quite uh, reluctant because I thought I never had a desire to go to Africa. And as time went on, it got heavier and heavier. So finally, I gave in and said, "All right, as soon as Latin America is over with, we'll go uh, check it out." And so, anyhow, we got back, finished the job, and uh, and then when I was in uh, Costa Rica, we went to the Unity uh, Unity Church there. And they carried the Arantia book in their book, book uh, store. And uh, so we became great friends and had an introduction to the book uh, sem seminar. And um, uh, there was a young uh, a fellow, uh, Roger Goffney, who was a minister for the Unity Church, mm -hmm. visiting down from Colorado, actually, in Denver. And so, uh, I told him about the trip, and uh, the, the, I told him that that was the next thing I guess I'm going to have to do. And he said, oh, he said, I'll be your partner. He said, I've done the east coast of Africa, and so, <laughs> wow. so yeah, it was great that he volunteered mm -hmm. to go with me as a partner. And I thought that was great because he had an experience, but we're starting on the west coast, this to the east coast. So, in the meantime, we had this time in, in, Italy, in Europe, and uh, I had a friend in Birmingham, England, that I called, went to see with Stella. We had two weeks, so she said, let's go in early and, and do some work, so we did. And uh, <clears throat> so I happened to have an international study group, that guy with me, Opened it up, Panto Bantam, Birmingham, England study group. I go, wow, well, what's this? So I pick up the phone and I call, call, and I get you, I get Panto Bantam. <coughs> and, uh, and I said, hi, I'm Norman Ingram from Molokai, Hawaii, and I have 200 French books, 200 English books, and I'm heading to Africa. I gotta meet you. <laughs> that was the first I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that Pato said to me after, after that. So at 30 minutes or so, wherever he was, he was there at the door. And it was love at first sight. We both hugged each other, and it was like long lost friends. <clears throat> I just did that every since. Thank you for joining the community. So I'm going to read this for him, okay? Um, it says, thank you all for coming. We started UNO, Urantia Nations Outreach, in 1995. Our first and main objective was to place the Urantia books in 184 national libraries. The purpose was this. When the Urantia book is mentioned in any nation, they may say this book can be found in your nearest nation's library. We began in Latin America and Mexico. Now there are over 38 municipal and national libraries, 20 plus universities, and 14 prisons that have the Urantia book on the shelf. We delivered over 184 books and spoke to over 500 people in 24 months. 
with much help and the help of the powers that be, we were able to plant some seeds. We spent two months in 1995 traveling the Urantia Trail together in South America, going from Lima to Ecuador to Colombia to Brazil, and up the Amazon River to Iquitos, Peru, and onto Chile. We wanted to go to each nation's capital, to the national libraries, universities, and prisons. It was always a blessing to go to prisons. Our first experience was in Guadalajara, Mexico. There were 30 inmates that sat down to see our introduction of the adoration video, which we always showed first. On October 24th, 1995, we left with the few books we could afford for Peru. Five people from four different study groups in Southern California joined with me. They were also going to Peru for an international conference. Duane Four, Richard Amura, Stella Rediger, Janma Hafi, and Sandy Varga. In November 1997, we embarked with Dan Rourke on a four-week tour of Asia. Thanks to the fellowship, we delivered 120 books to 11 libraries. 120 books to 11 libraries. At least as many universities. Hong Kong, Seoul, Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Bangkok, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur. We also thank the fellowship for mailing over 20 hardcover books to similar Asian institutions. In 1998 and 99, we visited 28 countries of Africa. While there, we met the master teacher, Musai Nidai. Musa India, Prince John Beidou, and Father Louis, Louis, who have all been to America to visit their Urantia family of believers. The time spent in Africa was extensive. It was in Botswana that Norman tore his Achilles tendon. Despite this, despite this he soldiered on for two more months <laughs> to complete the first half of the African project. A year later, he returned to visit the east coast of Africa and complete their objective. Here is a list of the countries in Africa that were visited and seeded. All right, I might not get all of these right, but help me. Benin, Botswana, Cameroon, Côte d'Ivoire, Ivoire, Côte d'Ivoire, Côte d'Ivoire, <laughs> Egypt, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Kenya, Madagascar, Malawi. Mauritania, Morocco, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Swaziland, Tanzania, Togo, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Amazing. The total of nations reads Mexico, seven in Central America, nine in South America, 14 in Asia, and 28 nations on the continent of Africa. Approximately 348 English, 210 Spanish, and 84 French Urantia books were delivered. A great work accomplished. To quote Norman, my greatest reward in this effort is when a beam of light shows in my brother's eye as he accepts the truth we have for them. Plus when I get a new, what's that, H-I-F-T-U-B? Oh, plus when I get a new person to say how I found the Arantia book, story, it is like getting my paycheck. Thank you very much. This is, this is Norman's partner, Stella, and they were working together on all of these projects for many years. She just passed away 
last year at the age of 90, Seven. 97. Wow. And she was still fully alert, full of fire at 97. And she also, she also founded the Battered Women and Children's Show in Whittier 35 years ago. So I want to thank also George Dupont for his assistance when we were on our way to Africa. He put us up at the foundation and we want to thank George for that. I mean, his kindness and the kindness thing. Any ranch in Jefferson to me is what George said as we left for Africa. But if you go to, if you get into any trouble or you go to jail, let me know and I'll be on the first plane back. And the short says they keep for all coming to listen to this. God bless. All right, let me hear from Norman Ingram one more time, please. Thank you, Norman. Um, is how was your recent trip to Ghana? Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Incredible to see 35 to 40 people getting together, and and then and the last night we were there. The study group was marvelous. Just and uh, to see all these people and the knowledge that they had of the book already. And it was uh, an experience that uh, pleased heaven, I'm sure. One of the things I'd like to say is check your local libraries. It doesn't have to be an international library, but it can be your library in your community. And check back every once in a while because a lot of times the books are checked out and they don't get back to the library which you know, hope is out there doing some good. So if you get a chance, try it and see. Do as much as you can to please the Father and do His will. And love your brothers and sisters. That's what it's all about. Love you all.